questions, I thought we might chat about the Santa Fe Classic Pack 01 from High Iron Simulations that's come out for Train Simulator Classic. You get quite a bit with this pack. First up, we've got the U, let me get this right, 28GC, which I think is the U-Boat in uh, Warbonnet livery, which looks kind of cool, and it comes in both dynamics and non-dynamic varieties. Then we've got the F3B A and B units, also in dynamic and non-dynamic varieties. Then we have the F7 in cat whiskers. And behind that, we've got an F7 in cigar band. Kind of cool. Then we've got a GP35 in blue and yellow. It's kind of funny that we've gone from war bonnet Cat's Whiskers, Cigar Band, Boring Blue and Yellow. That's life. Then we've got the uh, GP7 and the GPB. So the B is a capitalist unit. And that also comes in the Blue and Yellow. And it comes with Dynamics and without Dynamics. And in a passenger variation as well for higher speeds. And last but not least, we've got the little GP9 in Zebra. Consist-wise, you've got quite a bit of variety, ranging from the El Capitan consist here through to various freight combinations with various locomotives. So you're pretty well set for pretty much anything you want. And back to another El Capitan, just because we could. You can use the content that comes with the pack on any route you want using the uh, Scenario Builder. But if you want to drive the scenarios that come with it, you need two routes. You need Arizona Divide and you need Rat and Pass. So let's just start with Rat and Pass. For the GP7, we've got Hoppers for York Canyon, and that one's in blue and yellow. And we've also got the GP7 in Zebra for Q Interchange. If you want to drive the F7 with Cat Whiskers, we've got a 50s flashback. And in Cigar Band, we've got Climbed Santa Fe Summit. And for the uh, U28GC war bonnet, we've got the El Capitan westbound. Now we go back and have a look at Arizona Divide. For the F3 war bonnet, we've got the El Capitan eastbound, and there's two scenarios for that. For the GP35 in blue and yellow, we've got Phoenix bound freight part one and two. And for the U28GC war bonnet, we've got Train 100, the Super C, which is a freight train that runs at passenger speeds. Pretty cool. The GP9s and the GP7s look quite nice. Good to have them in the game. Great to have the slug, the GP7B, sitting around. Good to have. There's plenty of GP35s in the game already, so not that special there. The F3s and the F7 look reasonably nicely textured and, and reasonably well done. Now, the U, while it looks really nice, is not all that accurate when you compare it to photos of the real thing. So, hmm, perhaps it could have been another model. It's hard to say. I'm not an expert in Santa Fe locomotives by any means, but I had a bit of a trawl around at some imagery and I think it looks a bit off. So, next up, we should probably drive a couple of these and see how we go. And the F3 in Warbonnet livery on the front of the El Capitan. This is the fifth time I have tried to get a nice clean take to have us show this locomotive off. So, let's turn on the gyro light and Let's put on our bright headlights and our hoverboard lights and our class lights. Is that one? That one. Good, they should all be on now. The uh, gyro light doesn't seem to light up no matter what I do, but that's okay. Uh, let's get some gauge lights going. Now we got into forward, so let's get our brakes off. Now they partially release. Let's release the rest of the way, shall we? Good. All right. Now let's get some notches on. Notch seven. Oh, well, that's adventurous. How about we try four? That'll do. Now 
Now I've had some issues getting a uh, clean run for you guys. I think there might be something a little bit wrong with the scripting of this locomotive, particularly when you're trying to use it with rail driver. Because I've had it go out of forward gear. I've had it apply the dynamics. I've had it jump into an emergency. We're doing okay so far. So some nice things you can do is you can uh, open the windows. So you just did something weird then. Judging by purely by the sound. Uh, we can wind down our windows. We've got a uh, passenger view where if we wait long enough we'll see that freight train that we've just passed. There he is. Well, let's go up into notch 8. Doesn't sound awful. Alright. That's gotten us up to 50 mile an hour awfully fast, but there are five locomotives. There's 2As and 3B units on this train, so that's probably not that unusual. And I'm deliberately coming in here because I want to try and set the dynamic brakes. So I'm letting it throttle down, I'm being nice to it. And I can't. So I don't know what gives there. It's just try and notch down with the keyboard. Mm, no. Alright, let's uh, come out of and back into forwards. Let's try that. Oh, now we can. So I can hear the dynamics revving up. So if you're a rail driver player, I think, I'm afraid to say, you're going to have to use the mouse and the keyboard. Because it's just not very rail driver friendly. Let's see if I can put it further into dynamics with rail driver now it's in dynamics. Yeah, I could do it now. Alright. Let's come out of dynamics. Sounds like it was already on the way out anyway. And now it's on the way back in. Can we throttle up? No. What about if we use the mouse? No. Okay. Yeah, I think the, the scripts just get really, really confused when you use rail driver. So it sounds like it's going into dynamics again now. Hmm. Okay, now I can't do either. I can't throttle. So it's locked, basically. I can, can I move the reverser? No, I can't even move the reverser anymore. It's all locked. It's all just stuck. Alright, now I can still move the dynamic handle, but I don't want dynamics. I want to come out of dynamics. And now I can hear it's ramping up again for dynamics. Alright, well, look, that's as far as I'm going to drive this train, because to be honest with you, it's... Um, not an amazing experience, I'm sad to say. So, let's try one of the others. Righto, we're going to try the U in Warbonnet again. And we're still on the El Capitan, but we've moved over to the Rattan Pass route. We've got three locomotives this time. Significantly more modern appearance. What can we do in the cab? At least our brakes are staying on, that's a good start. Just trying to see what can be activated. Instrument lights, good. 
I saw something about cab lights there, we're briefly. Okay, we can turn cab light side off. Uh, we can do our rear headlights, it's good. And have our passengers loaded up yet? No. Just waiting for that to happen. Let's uh, try the horn while we're here. doesn't sound that amazing to be honest we're allowed to leave so let's uh, jump in the cab let's see how we go so let's release the brakes no, we've still got an initial reduction on the brakes yeah thank you for your ATSF Santa Fe stuff all right let's throttle up okay that's working with rail driver Like a true passenger engineer, we've gone straight for notch 8, as you do. Oh, apparently it's got a gyro light as well. Let's have a look out there. Oh, they're moving around, but they're not lit up. So is there a switch in here somewhere to turn it on? Gyro light. Ah. Okay, what do we got now? Look at that! They work! Alright, let's just throttle back down. Very sensitive on the rail driver. Let's go into the dynamics. That seems to be working in this locomotive, so we've gone into setup. Yeah, the dynamics in this locomotive seem to be working. Yeah, this one's better than the F3. Alrighty. Now, yeah, can we throttle up again? Seems so. What about brakes on this one? Initial reduction should give us about 14 pounds, and it does, that's good. Alright, let's go for 30 pounds. Let's go back into. La no, not release. No. Where's lap? Okay, we're just going to sit. Doesn't seem to have a lap position, that's okay. Not all train brakes do. So what else can we do in here? Can we open the windows? Yep, yeah, looks like we can open the windows. That's good. What about wipers? Do they work? Uh, that looks like a no. Okay. No, well, brakes work. Going for a release, it looks alright. Yep. Let's throttle her back up. Oh, that gyro light does cast on the ground, doesn't it?
imagine how annoying that would be coming towards you, but I guess that's the idea. Looks like some GP35s going the other way. They sounded all right. What about number board lights and things like that? Oh, where do I turn those on? Up here somewhere? None of those seem to be activated. Are there light switches here? Doesn't seem to be. So I've got our headlight controls. It sounds a bit weird on these ones. Like the recording was distorted. the sounds of things I'm probably going a bit quick yeah, just a little bit all right let's see how well an emergency brake goes <laughs> not at all it seems there we go sound a bit weird okay that's enough for a first look I guess righto then so we've had a little bit of a look around with the pack we've got one loco that seems to be a little bit sad and we've got another loco that seems to be working fine and we've got a scenario for a GP7 which seems to have a GP9 in it hmm that's all right, that's just a, a typo. But I'm going to leave the first look here. So mm, half and half at the moment. There's some visual issues. There's some driving issues with the F3. I haven't tried the other locomotives yet. So I will give them more of a go. I'm not prepared to commit a comment at this time, but I think it does need some work but I'm not going to tell you whether I think it's good or bad right now. I just don't have enough experience with it yet. Um, I will be streaming this at some point in the not-too-distant future, so you can have more of a look if you like. If you want to uh, wait for that, then uh, feel, feel free. Alrighty, so first look over and done with. I'll leave it with you. Bye.